This is the location. It looks beautiful from down here at Turn 11, the Newcastle Street Circuit. Dunlop Series action, first race of the year, not far away. So young drivers and definitely fluttering heartbeats, nervous, sweaty hands. There is Ryan Wood, definitely one of the, uh, the faster drivers in the field, faster than where he'll be starting this one from 10th. He's probably on for a top four performance until he lost that lap in the traffic earlier today. And uh, it was really quite enlightening talking to him earlier today before this race, has the right mindset for this one. The other thing he brought up, which I think is a very good point, is there'll be a number of drivers in this field who aren't used to starting these cars. Yeah, no, that's right. And that's one thing that we will have to keep an eye on as far as how they all launch from the grid because there are so many people that are new to driving a supercar. One of the real challenges you have in your supercar career is actually getting these cars off the line efficiently. Getting them to the line seems to be the uh, issue right now. Got yes. ourselves a bit of a Newcastle traffic jam back there. Yeah, so what we're seeing now is the cars left the paddock area and they do what they call a formation lap, where they go around and they're not in grid order when they leave. So now there's a bit of confusion as to what's going on here. And as you said, Chad, it's peak hour in Newcastle at the moment, Saturday afternoon. Starting to make their way through. It's a little bit messy. But everyone will find their grid spot and then they'll take off for an actual warm-up lap and then we'll yeah. come back and go racing. So we don't get to see this aspect of it, of a race preparation, if you like. Yeah, so. and it might, it might look a little unorganised, but the reason is because we did have a little bit of a delay from yeah. the, the incident that we had at the end of the Aussie racing cars, which sort of it's jumbled it's the field up a little bit. Incidents, it's plural, was about three multiple, at once. Multiple, yes, there was quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> so it was quite the clean-up, but as you can see, everyone now finding their way to their rightful grid positions. Yeah. What you do need to be careful here as a driver is keep an eye on the engine temperature because you need airflow going through the radiator to keep the engines cool. And it is a warm day here in Newcastle, so when the cars are sitting still or not moving that quickly, you just need to keep an eye on the engine temperature, make sure you don't overheat it. I love that this guy's in the field, Jack Perkins. It reminds me of having Paul Dombrell out there a few years ago. A real marker for these young drivers. If you uh, want to go out there and compete against a guy who's going to be driving with Will Brown at Erebus this year, well, go beat him right now in the Dunlop series. Yeah, a real marker for the young drivers. And Jack actually mentioned Paul Dumbrell yesterday as why he was doing it, because Paul Dumbrell so successfully teamed up with Jamie Winkup years ago, and it was because of the work he was doing throughout the season in the Dunlop series. And Jack's recognised that. He wants to up the miles that he does throughout the year. Green flag formation lap. Green flag formation lap. warm-up lap. It's the actual warm-up lap, so there'll be a simulated launch just there, and now it's time to get to work. Get some temperature into the brakes and tyres. Probably a very important practice start for a few of the drivers in this field with such limited experience. So Dunlop Series action, formation lap. Newcastle Street Circuit. We haven't been here in three years. A number of these drivers well, in fact, two of them have only ever been here before, and that is Jack Perkins and Matt Charter, one of those guys, on the front row. And it's the grid now that will check out how about Cooper Murray, his first ever Supercars qualifying session. He picks up the pole. He's alongside Jack Perkins, who has so much experience in these cars. Zach Best, twice the runner-up in this championship. Is this going to be the year for him? Super 3 combatants from last year, right inside that top five. Brad Vaughan and Kai Allen, three-place grip penalty for Aaron Love. We'll send him further down the order. And uh, there's some next generation names back here. Crick, Bates, Seaton, Johnson, Kelly. Some of the most famous names in Australian motorsport are back and they're doing it here in the Dunlop series. Names like Perkins included. He'll be starting this one on the front row. Jack, what are you working through at the moment? Hey guys, yeah, just getting some brake temperature in the car, some tire temperature, and then towards the end of the lap, we'll just get a little bit of temperature in the clutch and then see if I can show this young bloke up off the start. <laughs> Last time you started on the front row, you went on to win the round, Sandown 2019. Think you can do it today? Jesus, mate, I've had two kids since then, but um, <laughs> hey, we'll have a crack. I'll have a crack, don't you worry about that. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, getting stuck into it and see how we go, eh? Jack, we understand the importance of getting temperature into the tyres and brakes, but just run us through why it's important to warm the clutch up as well. Um, it's just about getting feel for it, Garth. Um, just when the clutch runs at a slightly hotter temperature, you get a better feel for it. So just give it a bit of a slip here and um, get a nice feel for the start of the race. Beautiful. All right, mate. Thanks for the chat. Might check in with you a bit later.
Thanks, John. Alongside 21-year-old Cooper Murray. Cooper's Porsche experience car was quite a late second in the Sprint Challenge. Then second in Carrera Cup. He's an eight-time race winner in Carrera Cup as well and had a whole year away from motorsport. Saving up the dosh to come back and have a, a big tilt at a supercar's career. And uh, it's instantly successful. It's Jim McDonald. His engineer will be elated with that pole position earlier today. Great way to start the championship, isn't it? And Four, three, two, one, zero. Right on me. Off. That's what the most impressive to be honest. Think about what you're going to do with his speed has been well known, but having a year off and coming back and picking right up where he left off was very impressive. Last year, you could not miss a single hey, minute of this action. Up now. It was breathtaking. Well, a brand new year. Play. Gen 2 meets Super 2. And the car of the future goes to the stars of the future in Super 3. New cars, play, play, play. new kids. Ripping up Watt Street. Great start, Jack Perkins. That's experience. Can they find the brake markers up here? We've had so many cars overshooting that brake marker in practice, and it's going to be awfully tight to run them too wide down the beach side. That's Brad Vaughan and maybe contact for a moment with Matt Charter. He gets out of the bucket, keeps it on the track, ripping up through the residential section. A clean start through the first half of this lap. And back here is where you'll find the Super 3 cars mixed in with the Super 2 cars as well. Looks like the pole sitter there, Cam McLeod, holding his own at the moment. Frantic first lap, but they're all finding their own little piece of this Newcastle Street circuit. Yeah, smart play by Brad Vaughan and Matt Charter to go line astern from the run down turn two to turn six. It's very difficult to go side by side down there. To do it that early in the championship is fraught with danger. So, so far, as you mentioned, Chad, reasonably clean lap. Jack Perkins will lead him to the line at the end of lap one. Cooper Murray who didn't get a great launch, but his second phase wasn't too bad. Kai Allen tried to get around the outside at turn one, and that didn't work. And Zach Best, who didn't launch well at all, picked up and got back to third spot. So, clean first lap, line of stern as they run up to turn two for yeah, the start of the second lap. Lots of chat from the engineers, a good chat too. Just settle it down, settle into a rhythm. Long race ahead. 21 laps, this one. Can certainly, you can't win the championship in the first race, but you can certainly make it a lot harder to win it. Ooh. Someone was wide at the entrance to turn two at the top of Watt Street. Trying to sneak their way through. I was going back through the record books, trying to find the last time a championship winner had a DNF and did not finish in this category. I gave up after about four or five years. Oh, now I was Nash Morris. Morris. And he was a guy who had a really tough start to last season. Oh, it's got a broken steering arm. You can see the left front's wobbling, and you can see it hanging down. You need know, to be careful here, Nash. Not get it back to the pits too Ooh. quick, because sometimes it'll just not steer where you want it to steer. So James Masterson, who started from pit lane, working his way through. There's a wood circuit sponsorship on that car. Cool little track in uh, Marula, just south of Sydney. Top four have got away a little bit here over Jay Hansen back in fifth. Perkins leads, and he'd be happy with that because now you can just settle in and start to manage the tyre. Very difficult to over overtake here, so someone with Jack's experience will know exactly where he's just got to place the car. And there's no point running away here, putting your head down and look one, Thank you, running away and burning the tyre off. 14, 23, plus one lap. Motorsport Australia Race Control, just letting us know that the time's certain run out a little bit due to the late start to this race, just to make sure we get the whole race in if we need it. But yeah, Jack Perkins, there's no point running away here, because if there is a drama and there's a safety car in the middle part of the race, and you've burnt your tyres off and that gap then closes back up again, you've got nothing left to fight with in the second half. So I wouldn't expect that Jack's going to run away here. He'll just put the car in the right spot at the right time and manage the tyre. Want to keep an eye on this man though, Zach Best. He felt like he's got a fast car and wants to be at the front. So, oh, Ellie Morris pointing in a very awkward direction down here. Oh, 
with James Masterton just sneaking by. Now, he was the last car in the queue because Nash Myers is back in the pits. And it has been a bit difficult for these Tickford cars to find reverse this weekend. We saw that with Brad Vaughan in practice yesterday. So this okay, is down clear, to seven, I think. Clear. Just got a good 20 seconds, 30 seconds before the field arrives here. So start replace. Fair bit of wheel spin for the front row, particularly Perkins car. Look at that. Lights it up sideways. Kai Allen got a belter of a start, but just found himself in the wrong place in turn one. Overcommitted here. He just carried too much speed and locked the brake and just ran him a little bit wide, and that got Zach Best back in the game. Too wide, but generally okay. This might be what happened with Nash Morris if you look a bit further. It's already happened. Oh. I think that's happened on the curb or the tyre bundle down at turn one. So when he grabbed the brake, the steering arm was already broken. And then you can see here, one wheel's going in the wrong direction. Broken steering arm. That's Nash's a... done a nice job just to get it back to pit lane. And here's the replay of Ellie Morrow. Just loses the rear on turn in. Down at turn seven. We've seen that happen quite a bit over the course of the weekend so far. Everyone did a really nice job to make sure that they kept clear of Ellie's car stricken down there. Let's look at that corner. So able to stay green. And the race continues. And uh, that's unfortunate for Nash, isn't it? He really struggled at the start of last season. I think five DNFs out of the first six races last year for Nash. He's got natural talent there. We saw that in Super 3. Quite luck to get the championship started. Hey, everybody, up on the balcony. What a cool spot that is to watch. Up at turn two. Uh, Zach Best working on the rear of Cooper Murray, looking for an opportunity to sneak by up into second place. So plenty of speed aboard that Anderson Motorsport X Dick Johnson Racing Mustang. The, carrying the Dick Johnson Racing views on that car, a bit of a tribute to that team. Yeah. Pinsky built car that was uh, campaigned by Fabian Coulthard a couple seasons ago. So plenty of pedigree. Talking to some of the drivers in the pits before this race, a lot of chat about tyres on the left hand side. We see Paul Morris, his son Nash, out of the car. New engineer Matt Saunders is the engineer, young engineer that powered last year's champion Declan Fraser to victory. So a difficult start for them. So back to the point on tyres, there was quite a bit of chat about making sure that they're going to last the 21 laps. Hopefully we get loads of green flag running in here. But there's some talk strategically, push hard early if we don't go the 22 laps. Yeah, well, I mean, I, that's a high-risk strategy for me. <laughs> because if you, can, if you feel like you've got speed, then push early and get track position and then consolidate that track position. So, like I was saying earlier with Jack Perkins, he's got the track position, so he's just consolidating now. There's probably more speed in that car if he wants it, but uh, probably just not trying to run away, just managing the tyre. The fastest car on track right now is actually Aaron Love back in eighth place. His last lap was four tenths of a second, a lap faster than Jack Perkins, our race leader. So that emphasises the point. But I feel like Jack's just managing the tyre. And that's giving Zach Best a chance to range up on the rear of Cooper Murray in that battle for second place. Cool angle that is. Sky at the other side of the turn nine corner. There is a beach down there somewhere. Battles on for the lead. Oh, lead. Perkins is out wide. Can he keep it stuck there? He might have the inside at turn 12. He commits to the door. Murray gives him some room. And they're still side by side. Great racing for the lead. Yeah, you can go side by side through that last corner. There's plenty of camber on the track. So Jack Perkins asleep at the wheel there. And Cooper Murray has grabbed the lead. So I'd be curious to know if something happened down at turn 11 to give Murray the opportunity or whether Cooper Murray just took the opportunity as it presented itself. What a move down at turn 11. New leader is Cooper Murray in Eggleston. Top of the pops now. So, Dunlop Series action here in Newcastle. Cooper Murray, car 88, leading this race. And Jack Perkins was leading earlier. Now, was there a flashing yellow there? Oh, there oh, was. Yeah, there was, because there's wow. a car in the wall. That was close. Who was that? I think it might be Jason Gomesol. Oh, no, Aaron Love. That's twice in a weekend for Aaron, finding his own way into an incident. We had one in practice. Car boards and flags, safety car boards it's and flags. Not a great spot. You can see safety everyone. Safety car crew, yeah. stand by. Oh, that's Jordan Sinney. Yeah, there's flags. another one. And yeah, copy, mate. I can see that. That's hopefully, right. we don't get any more because that gap is it's getting dumb. smaller and smaller. 
There's a guy jammed behind you, so we'll have to wait. We've only got lead. three or four more cars to come through here, including well, Chris Murdoch like and Callum Walker. Here. They'll be the next ones on the scene, and they're about yeah, five okay. seconds away. So Cindy's going to get his car backed up. Um, all right, as soon as he pulls out. Yeah, all right, you can and back up. experience of Chris Murden was able to uh, make sure that he had plenty of room. All right, so big damage to the front of Cindy's car. That's pushed the front splitter back against the front tyre. You can see it rubbing. His domiciles are stuck in there. Jordan Love parallel parks next door. And then wait for it. You can see everyone's taking to the curb to avoid what's going on here. You feel like, yeah, there's heaps of time there, so the teams can relay that information, but it's not. There's not a lot of time. And this will just show how blind it is. Look how late you re react to see that car. Cooper Murray leading under the safety car now. Did a nice job wrestling that lead away from Jack Perkins. Here's how it happened. Wow. Nice move. Nice move. Wow. <laughs> Triple eight move if I ever saw one. Yeah, got in there and wedged the door open. I don't reckon Jack was aware that that was going to take place. So Jack's nicely under control here. And then all of a sudden, there's a black and blue Commodore coming up the inside. And Jack was very nice to him at turn 12. Yeah, I mean, you can go side by side here. So Cooper Murray did the right thing, hung on the outside, gave Jack room. But because oh. he knew he had the inside run here for the bend around onto the front straight. How's the trust from Cooper Murray to know that he can run side by side with a concrete wall on his left. He knew that a driver of Perkins' experience he could do that with. But, uh, I mean, Jack has to be commended for the way that he fought that yep. battle. Yeah. I mean, you've got to learn to f you live to fight another day. So Jack, with all his experience, understood that Cooper Murray had made the move, and if he was good enough to hang around the outside, then that's fair play. So now under safety car point I was making earlier, there was no point running up the road and driving away because inevitably you will get a safety car in this race and close the field back up again. Nash Morris, unfortunately you find yourself on the sidelines for this opening round of the Super 2 Championship. Just tell us how this unfolded. Um, all I know is that second lap I uh, did what I normally do and run a bit of curb at turn one and then I thought I had a flat initially because the left front was wobbling but then we've had a look and it's just the bottom steering arm's broken so um, not what we wanted. I needed some laps to, to get my head around the place, but um, I guess we'll have to wait till tomorrow. Aside from that, how's the world gym entry been performing and qualifying in practice? It's been not bad. Um, I didn't do a very good job in quality, so I was looking forward to the race to um, get some laps under my belt, learn the place, uh, get some hopefully a good result for my sponsors. But here we are in the pit lane, so I just want to say sorry to them that I'm here and not out on the racetrack. Well said, mate. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks very much. Just going out pit lane now. They came into the pits. They had a quick look. Mechanically, it's all fine, but just a bit of, bit of uh, that 100-mile race tape on the front guard just to hold it down. So luckily, with that nudge into the tyre, Bundles only did a bit of cosmetic damage, no suspension damage. Okay, it's Jason Grumbersall's car, who's uh, I've just seen been released from pit lane. to be able to join the back of the queue. I'm not sure if he lost a lap. Probably, I'd say. Potentially, yeah. Yeah, he might be able to catch the pack up. We'll see how it works with timing. And, uh, wow, well, Cooper Murray, hey? Ticking the boxes. Nice move. The lane, please. Ken McLeod. Confirming lights are out. We're in the lane. Oh, that was a late oh, call. Late call for really safety car rejoin here. Safety car. Oh, they're so going to stack up in the background here. Up. Well, because now the queue's wanting to bunch up. Take the opportunity. Look deep. Look at the top of the screen. Oh, boy. And Cooper Murray's taking them really deep for launch, which is what you should do when you get a late call like that. But, wow, race control gave them no time there. I saw the lights flick off on the safety car, and I was like, are we lights out? Did we miss something? And then you heard the call as we did. Gee, the drivers did a really good job avoiding catastrophe on the restart, and they, they really held themselves nicely and get up now to action at turn two. And how about Cooper Murray, the presence of mind, then to be ready for that restart, to obey all the rules, wait for the green flag. And Stu McDonald, his engineer, would have been talking through that process. So we're back and running, green flag. And some clean running. Hopefully we get some more green flag laps in. We'll see what Murray can do from the lead. Yeah, Murray's done a nice job on this restart as well. Put a bit of a gap between himself and Jack Perkins, who looks to be under a bit of pressure from Zach Best. Perkins sideways off turn nine, trying to get the power down for the run down. The somewhat bent back straight. Down here through turn 10 over the bumps and breaking into 11. Just not close enough to get it done this time. Ty Allen in fourth. Nice and deep on the brakes, gets it under control for turn 11. 
Nicholas to Motorsport with two cars inside the top five, as is Image. And uh, Ellie Murrow and James Masterson got themselves into a little dueling Mustang fight at turn two. Go around it, go around it. Good news is we oh. keep going. Jim Policina. That doesn't look as good. No, that aero is not working oh. efficiently at the moment. Just need to be careful here, Jim. Oh, and debris right on the racing line down there as well. Yeah, it's heavy, heavy one. contact with the wall, I would say. Debris so, coming down the hill. I reckon Ellie Morrow and James Marston will probably get right where that debris is. It's a Super 2 and Super uh, 3 fire. Yeah, so they're connected, weren't they, Chad? Aaron Love tried to get out the inside of Jim Policina. This is turn six. Policina didn't see Love coming, and then Masterton takes avoiding action, and Ellie Morrow had nowhere to go. A big contact with the outside tyre barrier for Policina in that Super 3 Commodore. So his day is done. On board James Marston for the run down the hill. Watch for the car in front and shove it up the inside here into turn six. You can get it done there, but you need two to tango. Masterton takes avoiding action, finds himself up against the concrete barrier. We're still green though, and Cooper Murray continues to open this gap. He's on to set the fastest lap of the race here as he opens the gap to over one and a half seconds over Jack Perkins in second place. Fastest lap, Cooper Murray, a 13.8. Two tenths of a second faster Jack Perkins. One to go. First race of the year. Eggleston firing back with their new stars, Cooper Murray and Kai Allen, looking very quick to start off this year. He was very quick in Porsche racing. And that speed looks to be continuing over into a supercar for Cooper Murray. Pole position, didn't lead this one the whole way, had to pull a nice move. And there might still be some debris to worry about here. So he's not home yet. That run out of here, turn nine, down through turn 10. We saw Policina taking his car back to pit lane on the previous lap. But Cooper Murray so far has done everything he needed to do. Didn't quite get the launch he needed off the line. But got the race lead back nicely off Jack Perkins. Managed that late safety car restart. Beautifully open the gap to have some safety and we'll lead this one home. What a way to start a Dunlop Series campaign. His first ever drive in Super 2. Cooper Murray keeps his cool. It takes the first win of the year. Perkins home for second, best third. Runner up in the last two championships. Now watch for the fight in Super 3. McLeod, Stuart McCutcheon. And there's McLeod, the 92's first home. So debut wins in both Super 2 and Super 3. The pole sitters get the job done in both categories. Yeah, nice job. Plenty of speed. Cooper Murray certainly did everything he needed to do. Eggleston Motorsport team happy with that one. As you said, Chad, a nice fight back from this team. Didn't have the year they wanted last year, but have opened the 23 account perfectly. Two cars inside the top four. And not making...